So I want to share with you in this video a simple framework to think about uh, how to improve your authentic business. And there are three parts to it. There's serving your personal growth, part one. Part two is serving others. And part three is healthy money. So all right, let's get going. So part one, serving your personal growth. So how do we do this? Well, serving your personal growth has also three parts to it. Part one of that is working with virtue throughout the day. So every day when you show up for your business, are you just <laughs> frantically trying to do whatever seems right to do and, and kind of all over the place and, and just trying to get things done? Or have you taken on a commitment to your joyful productivity and realize that every moment of every day, you can either, when you're working, you can either work with virtue or you can just be unconscious and trying to so-called get things done. I have found that my life is so much more fulfilling when I do my best to bring virtue into this particular moment. Virtue, you can say values, you could say spirit, uh, spirit connection, but it's like every moment that you work on your business, you can either do it with intentionality of connecting with spirit and connecting with your values in that moment, no matter what the results are, that's the key, right? Like no matter if this thing works or not, the moment you spent with this thing, this task, this project has been worthwhile because you brought your soul into that moment. Imagine working like that throughout the day. And by the end of the day, you've had so many worthwhile moments for the soul, no matter the results and no matter what the task is even. It's not like you can always all day be doing only what you enjoy in your business. You can't, some of, obviously a lot of us love working with clients because we get to do deep transformational work with the right kind of clients. Well, that's not your entire day, is it? No, you might need, still need to do some business planning, some, you know, I don't know, calendar planning, some bookkeeping, some responding to emails, some social media posting, some preparing for meetings, some, you know, doing some out, whatever you're doing doing some outreach, whatever you're doing, still, the quality of that moment matters to your sense of fulfillment day by day by day. Because if you're just kind of trying to get things done for the, some kind of future result, healthy money, then you may, you, you may or may not even end up at the goal you want, but have you lived a fulfilling life all the way until there? Right. That's like, that's so super important in my mind. So that's why serving a personal growth, part one, working with virtue throughout the day, joyful productivity, joy pro is how I like to shorten it to say. Uh, second aspect of growing, serving a personal growth is getting more capable and organized to do everything. So instead of just, you know, putting out fires, going from thing to thing to thing to thing, are you continually looking at your systems? of how you organize your time, organize your information, and looking at your processes of, okay, whenever I come back and do this thing, am I improving the process? Have I written down what the steps, what the major steps of the process are so I don't have to keep trying to remember it the next time? And then the next time I show up, I follow my steps. Oh, I can improve this step. Mm, maybe this step should go above that step, whatever. So are you, are you being conscious about improving your processes throughout the day? your work processes. And part three of serving your personal growth is how are you growing more knowledgeable and deeper about your field? How are you growing more knowledgeable and deeper about your niche or your field, your area of expertise? Now, you might say, well, I'm naturally doing that because I love reading or I love watching videos about my field or I love talking to people about my field. Those are all great. But I think the most um, powerful way to keep growing more knowledgeable and deeper about your field is by creating content consistently, creating content to share your expertise, to share your journey in growing your expertise consistently, to share with your ideal clients in mind, to serve them through your content. No matter if they buy today or buy in 10 years from now, you still want to keep serving them through your content. 
right? Because they then they're grateful, they they're growing alongside you, and when the time is right, they'll they'll work with you. Which brings us to the next major piece that I was going to talk about: serving your personal growth. That's been the first major part, and then second major part is serving others. And I think the content is a nice um, tie in a tie into this. Okay, so serving others, um, you know. One thing we should talk about, of course, is you know working with clients. When you're working with clients, um, you're helping them find healing or growth through your work, right? And so the question is, are you consistently opening space to work with individual clients? Now you might say, George, well, that's exactly why I'm watching your stuff and working with you is I'm trying to get more clients. Well, then let me ask you this. While you're still trying to get more clients, I hope that not one single work week goes by that you don't have at least one client appointment. Say, George, well, I, I wish I had, you know, some of you are just starting out, right? Some of you are like, well, George, I wish I had 10 client appointments instead of just three every week. Here's the solution to that. The tapering strategy. Okay. You can look this up online. A tapering tapering strategy for getting clients. You just Google that and you'll find my article and video about that. But essentially, that strategy allows you to fill your, however, how many slots would you love to have for clients every week? Would you like 10 maximum? Would you like 20 maximum? Would you like five maximum? I don't know how, what your maximum per week is, depends on your time management. But wouldn't it be great to fill all slots every single week, whether or not they're paying your ideal rate. So here's the thing, right? Wouldn't you rather be continuing to grow yourself and to serve others and to grow your understanding of how to serve others by actually doing the work every week instead of just waiting for the, the person who's going to pay you your full rate, which can be weeks or months until you fill your client spots? You're wasting a lot of time because the whole time, you could have been meeting with more clients and honing your the mastery of your of your craft because the better you're you're getting at serving clients the more word of mouth you naturally generate but also the more confidence you have in every aspect of your business creating content reaching out for clients you know creating other programs or whatever you just you just know how 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 good you are because you just keep doing the work so anyway individual clients that's part 1 of serving others how can you fill your client spots as much as possible, even if currently they're at a lower rate than you would like, but you're getting better and better and therefore getting more and more word of mouth, okay? Second aspect of serving others is uh, connecting with colleagues, connecting with colleagues, people who are in a similar niche as you, maybe they do the same work as you with the, for the same type of client. That would be the ultimate colleague, the most mirrored it's it's like it's like looking at yourself in the mirror. You can learn the most from them because how do you know if you look good or not? You know how do you know do you have to adjust your hair or to adjust how you dress or to adjust how you behave? You look in the mirror, right? Well, the colleague that has the most similar work as you for the most similar clients is your best mirror. But you might also connect with colleagues who are who are doing similar work with similar types of clients, but maybe it's a little different, more different. That's okay. You can learn from a lot of people, but. Connect with colleagues to to work together, to learn together, to say, "Hey, can we can we talk to share what's working? I'll share with you what's working in my in in, in our field, in my field, you know, in our joint field. What's what I've seen is working. What's working for me, and I'd love to hear what's working for you. And how can we how can we sharpen each other and, and like grow together? Right? Just that's a very basic way of of connecting. And then as you make friends with people, then you can refer business to each other. Maybe some some of their clients are not great fit for them, but are better fit for you and, and vice versa, right? Third way of serving others is to look at your industry as a whole and how can you help uplift your industry so that it serves the world better, it serves the audience better. And basically, as you start talking with colleagues, you are beginning to notice the norms of your industry because your colleagues represent the norms of your, you and your colleagues represent the norms of your industry. Start noticing what the norms are as you talk to more and more colleagues. Start to notice there's a particular pattern and how can you make that pattern even better, even of more service to, to, to the world 
uh, and also better for everybody in your industry. And like, just start noticing the patterns and what, what are some things that really should not exist in your industry? Maybe there are some norms and some practices that are not so good, maybe not so ethical or not so effective. And you can start talking to your colleagues and creating content to try to uplift your industry as a whole. And finally, the third major part is healthy money. Because as you, as you diligently uh, serve your own personal growth and serve others, then the natural result, yes, the natural result is healthy money. And we need to talk about healthy money and what are the different parts of it. One is the natural result is you make money, part one of healthy money. You make money by, by being conscientious about your, your personal growth and conscientious about serving others. Okay. And, and then part two of healthy money is that as you start making money, you have to learn to relate to money without greed and without anxiety. Just to learn to relate to money as a basic signal of how much, how much um, you are giving other people what they want that is scarce, that is, that is not something they can easily find elsewhere. You're giving people, you're selling people what they want that's not easily, cheaply found elsewhere, okay? And you learn how to relate to money that's just a data point. So oh, that's interesting. Oh, okay, this is how much I made from, from this offer. Mm, this is how much I made from that offer. Mm, okay, how can I adjust my offers so I can add even more scarce value in the world, some things that they can't easily find that they want, right? And then third part of healthy money is that you start relating to money as a way to help your community. First, you are able to sustain your yourself and your family, or obviously Maslow's hierarchy. You can't, can't even sustain yourself. How can you help the community? You can't even help yourself. So help yourself first, right? Make sure you're sustainable. Not, you don't have to make a billion dollars to start helping the community, right? You just basic sustainability where you feel not so anxious anymore, where you've related to money better. Now you can, you can use your money to help the community. The way I do that most is through my profit sharing. You know, I have a affiliate program, which is really profit sharing where my clients and my, my students, like they get some profit sharing from my business based on them partic participating in my business, they get profit back. And uh, so I really enjoy doing that once a month. I pay my, my, my clients and my students uh, sort of a, a, my profit share. And um, it's just a way that I've really integrated the way I, I deal with money in my business so that I have just enough. I have just enough for myself and I give as much back, therefore, to my, to my community as possible. Um, anyway, three major ways, th three major parts of how to think about growing your business, serving your personal growth, serving others, and then healthy money. So... Anyway, you may need to watch this again to catch some, some nuances, but I hope this is helpful. Um, I always uh, welcome your comments below. Let me know what part of it was helpful. And, and if you have any kind of quick questions, if I can answer quickly, I will do my best. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey and see you in the next video.